Hi everyone. Uh, we had some technical problems, but we are ready. Uh, my name is Weiner. Uh, I work for Red Hat uh, in the virtualization team for a while now. This presentation uh, was actually uh, proposed and uh, most of the slides were made by Triva Williams, who is the technical manager uh, on the Open Infrastructure Project uh, Foundation, where the, the project is hosted, but she could not make it here, so she asked me if I could be presenting it. Uh, I'm engaged in the project that I will be talking about, Kata Containers, uh, since more or less uh, 2020. Uh, and basically, I'll be talking about Kata Containers, and this is the, the mantra of uh, the project. It's like the speed of containers, the security of VMs. Uh, this is what we, we are seeking uh, in this project. Okay, uh, a little bit of uh, the history. Um, well, the, 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 the project actually uh, began uh, in 2015 when uh, Intel launches uh, clear containers. I don't know if many of you remember of that project. Uh, and then in 2017, it was uh, merged with other projects uh, and now it's uh, under the umbrella of the OpenShift Foundation. And uh, in May of 2018, uh, the first release. So this was the, the first release, what, not the perfect release, but uh, it was a workable version of uh, Kata containers. And 2019, more or less one year later, we have uh, the first uh, adopters using Kata containers on production. So we have Alibaba and, and other players. Uh, in October of uh, 2020, the, a major bump, uh, a 2.0 release. Uh, I will explain a little bit of each of those, those releases later. Uh, two, years, two years later, another major release, and guess what? 2014, we will have probably the next uh, major bump. I don't think it's uh, for intention. This is a, just a coincidence. Uh, and basically we sit here. We are uh, in the uh, next generation of uh, containerized uh, workloads and so on. Uh, okay. Uh, but what is this? What, what is exactly Kata containers. Uh, in a traditional container, uh, containerized system, you basically use uh, namespace and C groups to isolate it, uh, the process. So to create the containers. Of course, there are other uh, uh, layers of software and, and, and features being used, but the main ones are uh, the, the namespace and the C groups. Uh, then you can have uh, other technologies like uh, SecComp for enhancing the security of your containers. SecComp, for example, to filter out uh, syscalls that you don't want your application to execute. Uh, and you have capabilities and so on and so forth. The thing is, uh, if your workload, the application finds a hole, he can, in, in the, for example, container B, he can uh, escape and have access to uh, the container A, even, even have access to, to the host kernel. So this is the warm, basically, going from one container to another. Uh, in, in order to, to solve that, not, not exactly solve that problem, but uh, add a new layer of security for uh, uh, for the containers. We have uh, Kata containers with, with the approach which is basically your container is now isolated within a VM. So it's running inside a VM. Uh, and you have this, now this layer between the host kernel and your application. Even if your application uh, is able to escape from the namespace, for example, uh, it's going to have access only for with, uh, 
access to the guest Linux kernel, not the host. So this is basically what Kata Containers is. Uh, moving on, uh, when I joined the project, uh, we used to integrate Kata Containers with uh, Docker, for example. So you would be able to like Docker dash dash runtime and then spawn a container uh, in Kata Containers. We, we dropped the support. And nowadays we have the support only with uh, Kubernetes. So this is basically a chart that shows the, uh, how uh, the container is initialized uh, in Kubernetes. So uh, the first one on the top, you have uh, a container runtime interface by Kubernetes. You have, well, in this word, container runtimes may be many things. Uh, uh, but yeah, you have cryo and co container D or nerd CTL. And when uh, you need to spawn a container, you're gonna, one of those uh, container runtimes, they are going to run, for example, run C or C run, depends on how you configure your environment. But basically run C is in charge of actually uh, running the container or starting the container, provi pro providing the environment for, for the conta co container and uh, um, managing the life cycle of, of the container. Uh, with the Kata, this is the, the workflow with Kata containers. Basically, it sits between uh, the container runtime and uh, the container within the VM. So uh, now Cryo and Container D, they are uh, calling the, the Kata runtime and the Kata, Kata, Kata uh, runtime is in charge of uh, creating the VM, spawning the, 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 the container process inside the VM and so on. Uh, it's important to say that you don't need to change your application, right? The same application that you have, you don't need like recompile or something like that. It's, uh, it seems less, it works. You just need to change a, uh, a property in your configuration file when you're going to deploy your application on the, on the cluster, and it's going to automa automatically work for you. Okay, this is a example of uh, use case of uh, Kata containers. Uh, so in this example, you have a native workload. Uh, traditional, traditionally, how you uh, protect or you separate those uh, workloads. Basically, you, you run a sensitive workloads on node three and the other, the, the other one on node four. So you, you are physically separating the, 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 the workloads. Uh, and uh, with Kata containers, you can uh, even spawn the, 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 the two sensitive workloads in the same node. So this is going to allow you to increase the uh, amount of pod containers that you can run inside uh, your node. Uh, I'll run a little bit fast, sorry. Uh, so this is the product that we, 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 we made out of uh, Kata containers. Uh, this is the OpenShift Sandbox containers. Uh, here there are uh, some uh, blog posts is where we explain more uh, use case that you can use uh, with Kata containers in the OpenShift and Box containers. We, have, we are in the catalog of the Red Hat, uh, so it's very easy, simple to just click in and install it. Uh, so a little bit about the releases. Uh, the second major uh, bump, we improved uh, the agent. Because there is a agent, uh, let me go back a little bit. There is a agent inside the VM here uh, and that communicates with the runtime, right? There is no like a container runtime inside the VM. And we improved the, the, the uh, we changed uh, the agent. Now it's written in Rust. We changed the protocol. So uh, just to uh, load the amount of uh, memory that we, we use on the VM, because it's a concern, right, this uh, overhead that you, you're gonna have uh, in, in the system. Uh, all right.
right? So uh, VirtuOFS is now the standard uh, uh, shared file system because basically uh, on Kata containers, the, the, the container image is not pulled inside the VM. Uh, it's not even Kata who is in his responsible for, for that. It's the cryo and, and the, upper, the upper layers. So uh, we share the container uh, file system with the VM now using the using virtuofs uh, that was the first time that we use it so and then we improved uh, uh, some stuff for security we introduced the support for cloud hypervisor kata uh, pro, uh, supports cloud hypervisor firecracker and qemu as the virtual machine monitors so to spawn the, the kvm vms uh, a little bit of uh, stability some uh, uh, integration with uh, Kubernetes. Version three. Uh, so we have uh, other uh, uh, enhancements in terms of performance. We have this uh, single binary drag ball hypervisor, which is basically the runtime, the cut runtime and the VMM, the virtual machine monitor, they can be combined in, into a single process. So you will start, uh, so you don't need two, two process. Uh, um, and this, uh, we made this uh, mostly because we rewrite the, the, the runtime in Rust again, uh, but this is, was not just a rewrite for the sake of rewrite, right? Because Rust is nice. Uh, no, we, 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 we changed the, the architecture a little bit. Uh, and now, yeah, so support for C group V2. Uh, then we migrated to the version of Virtual FSD right in, 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 in Rust as well. We started the Confidential Container spin-off, with, which we'll have a, a workshop tomorrow, if you're interested to in know more about the Confidential Containers. A uh, little bit of, uh, we bump, uh, bumped versions of Kimu, uh, Kernel, and so on. Because, of course, you need to, to have the, the guest kernel. You must have the, the root FS and, and, and everything. This is uh, maintained and, and, and we tested uh, in the project. What's coming now? Next week. Uh, sorry, next year. <laughs> uh, the presentation from uh, Fabiano Fidencio on KVM Forum this week. He mentioned some stuff that we are working on. Um, just listening, uh, listening here. Uh, yeah, so the project is uh, getting rusty. Uh, we have only now, I think, the runtime, which is in Go. Uh, and yeah, uh, if you want to contribute, unfortunately, I'm out of time. Sorry for that. If you have questions, comments, uh, you can find me on the outside the, the, the room. Is there any time for at least one question, maybe? If there is any question, I don't see any question in the... Uh, Go ahead. So, uh, so the question is about the, the emulation to the end. Does it mean that you lose the flexibility of containers, like um, dynamically increasing the memory limit for each uh, container? Like if you have to predetermine when you are starting the spot, uh, what are the limits for the VM? And yeah, the, 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 the limits, they, they still work. You, 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 we use hot plug, for example, for dynamically increasing, decrease limits. 